and then it shifts, and I see this man there. He looks like an 80s metalhead guy, but without a face. Ghosty fam, welcome to the Activity Continues podcast. If you're new here, we are friends and soul sisters who recap episodes of the TV show The Dead Files and talk about other creepy shits, our lives, our <laughs> dreams, our hopes, whatever <laughs> we have for the week, our despairs. The TV shows we like. The TV show, the TikToks, the TikToks. <laughs> we're following. I'm Megan. And I'm Amy. Thanks for joining us. This week, Megan is recapping the Dead Files episode called Bethlehem Haunting. It's season 10 and episode 5, and it originally aired July 13th. I put 2028. 2018? It's 2018. Oh, 2018. Yeah. Not in the future. It did not release in the future. Yeah. But time's a um, construct, so it doesn't really matter. So how come you chose this one? I chose it because last week when we were just bebopping around and chatting, <laughs> we started talking about something religious i don't remember easter. what it was easter it's because we were trying to plan our happy hour around oh easter. right 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 and then i was just scrolling through the episodes and i saw one that was bethlehem and i'm like if this is not serendipity mm -hmm. so this will come out after easter but right. that's why i chose it so but it's not yeah. bethlehem bethlehem no it's bethlehem it's, pennsylvania yeah yeah and there is no jesus in it <laughs> right so, Right. Yeah. Um, cool. There are a few content warnings. There's the murder suicide. There's a fatal car accident. There's also a like a toddler who's attacked by spirits, and they do talk about possible essay this by the spirit. This by the spirit. Oh, so spirits. creepy. I know. This oh my episode. god. We had that last week too, didn't we? Yeah, we did. A couple of weeks in a row. Yeah, Amy's funny because she calls it perving out. I think yeah. he's perving out on him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Amy. So she's hilarious. She so me up. Our happy hour is coming up. Yeah. Even when this comes, this will be coming out. This one will be coming out on the fourteenth. Fourteenth. So April the twenty third will be our happy hour. Mm -hmm. That's when you need to get in on the Patreon. Do that mm -hmm. first. Yeah. So I wanted to tell you my story about yes, when we went geriatric to yeah I call concert. it our geriatric concert night out. This was when we went to see Robin Hitchcock, uh -huh. and I'm not is she related say, to Alfred. No, he's hmm. British though. He is. He's from British. Yeah, he's from British. That's right. Yeah, yeah. He's really cool. I've 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 been a fan of his since before I met Greg. He's an older guy, of course. Okay. Oh, Robin, and, not Alfred. Yeah. I was Robin, like, yes, he is yes, not yes, cool. Robin. No, no, he was okay. not a great guy, was he? No, he's a good director, but all right. So um, Robin, Robin Hitchcock is yeah. a male, and he he was performing, and I won't say where or when because I don't want anybody to figure out. Well, I guess you'd figure it out just knowing that it was in the state, but and it, I don't want anybody to. Well, you'll figure yeah. it out in a second. Yeah. You'll know in a minute why. So it is. It's at a club that does have seating, but not a ton. Like okay. the, there's like half wide open space and then there's some seating. Okay. We did not get a seat. We did not get there oh, early no. enough. All of the chairs were full when go we home. got there. It's fine. Just go home. I know. So, but our friends were there and they were seating, se seating, sitting, seated. They were seating everybody. They were, they were actually <laughs> ushers. <laughs> Please come sit down over here. I have a space for you. What uh, what's your seat number? Twelve <laughs> E, right this way. <laughs> yeah, it was just tables at a bar. Yeah. It wasn't <laughs> no no uh, assigned seating. So we stood with them for a little bit, and I did get to sit down when one of them wanted to stand up for a little bit. But anyway, yeah. that's not my story. So we're standing kind of by the bar, and it's pretty crowded. Shows going on, songs are playing, mm -hmm. and I hear this boom. And directly in front of me, a woman goes flat down, just 
down on her back. Falls. Oh no. Yep. <gasps> and I was like, what the f and I look, I could see her face. She's right in front of me. And then, you know, a bunch we all kind of backed up to give her space. And then some yeah. you know, staff people came up. I will say the staff was amazing. Oh, um, good. They were, you know, they were holding her head. They were, you know, helping her yeah. sit up, mm -hmm. which I kept mm -hmm. saying, should they be moving her? Yeah. But they gave her water. She was like, she was a little dazed, but she was, mm -hmm. you know, conscious. And they let her sit for a minute and then they stood her up and then they put her on a, a bar stool kind of and at a table. And she was with a man and he was standing next to her and we thought, oh, that was weird. Okay. Yeah. Five minutes later, she's down again. <gasps> Same woman? Same woman. Down again. And this time they did not really pick her up right away. They they kind of huddled around her. One person yeah. I think was calling 911. And then I heard a guy next to me say she wasn't even drinking. So, it's, you know, it's not like that. But it was kind of warm in there. Yeah. And like I said, everybody was old. The Robin Hitchcock at one point said, I can't see you all very well in here, but I can tell that you're, most of you are at least as ancient as me. Yeah. And Greg made a note that it looked like a jolly troll convention because there were a lot of people with long gray beards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so they, they picked her up and hobbled her out and, uh, I, I don't know. I never saw any sirens. Nobody, no EMSs or anything came into the building. So I assume she got out and home okay with the guy yeah. that she was with. What but if she just got overheated? It might have been. It was warm in there. I was I was warm. Mm -hmm. And it could have been. I think she was sitting though. So I don't think it was like mm. that kind of thing where you. I hope you know, she's okay. I hope I she know. wasn't drugged. I know. I know. Well, she was, yeah, she was with somebody. But I got drugged once when I was with Greg too. Yeah. So it happens. Yeah. But there was one more thing. Oh, so then at, w that was in the first set. And then mm -hmm. when there was a break in the, in the music, we were talking with our friends. And one of them said, oh, that reminds me of the time me and my friend were at, and I'll, I'll, I won't say the place, but at a bar watching karaoke. This guy got up and sang Brown Eyed Girl, mm -hmm. went back to his chair, high five dollars, friends. Down, dead, heart attack. Right heart after he attack. got done singing, heart attack. Yeah. Oh my god. I know. Paramedics it came in. He was already dead. Shouldn't karaoke. I know. It's the lesson there. I know. Wow. I know. I can't imagine. Anyway, he's. I wonder if he's haunting that bar. Maybe. Singing "Brown Eyed Girl" every night. Yeah, you should. Mm -hmm. It's a good song. Yeah, I don't like it, but I know a lot of people really? do. Yeah, I don't. I don't like. Is it too mainstream? No, it's too Van Morrison. I just I no, don't like any you don't of like his Van music. Morrison. Okay, well, I don't know. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. I don't like it. I'm Him and Neil cool. Diamond. I know that's hmm? un unpopular. I know. Yeah. Okay. Flip well, Phone Jody loves Neil Diamond, and I'm like, oh, Flip Phone Jody has good taste. Yeah. yeah. I know that. He, I understand that they're both very, very talented. Mm -hmm. I just don't like the music. That's okay. You can <laughs> feel that way. Yeah. There are people that I can't stand who other everybody loves, and I'm like, yeah. they're not that There's good. Always. Like Bob Dylan. Yeah. Not not good a songwriter. Fan. Yeah, not he's be very singing. talented, very talented, but mm -hmm. all of his songs sound the same. Yep. He can't enunciate to save right. his life. He always right. sounds drunk. He's yep. just not my cup of tea. Yeah. No, but I, I recognize he's talented. Yes, I agree on that one too. All right. So, oh, and then. We, last night when we were texting, we were Megan and I were both watching it TikToks, failed. of course, and obviously, and and I had seen one about this. It was a, a psychic medium that I follow, and she was talking about astral projection and astral dreaming, and how you can visit other places in your dreams. And I don't know if you all remember, but there was early on in this podcast, I was talking about a time where I had a dream that I was that I was flying over mm -hmm. the bluffs of Scotland and it felt yes. really, really real. And I had and never seen. And didn't Jenny say that that was you traveling? I don't think didn't I you? mentioned it oh, to okay. Jenny. For some reason I thought she did. No, but there, in the Q&A that Amy did with 
I think it, I want to say oh, it was well, a, maybe maybe that's where I got it. She from. talked about how you can when you're yeah. when you're dead, you can go yes. wherever you want. Okay, so yeah, so we saw this TikTok about astral mm-hmm. projection, projection, dreaming, whatever, and and so we were texting and we were like, I wonder if like I could just go to Scotland tonight or blah 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 because she was saying you can. Mm-hmm. Sort set of your um, intentions yeah, before you, can, you set go set to your sleep. Intentions. Exactly. So you can kind of program yourself to to do that. So we were like, maybe we could go meet each together other somewhere. Yeah. So um we we didn't we didn't really pick a place. We kind of just talked about different places. But I was like, maybe it just makes more sense if we just whatever, see if it happens. Mm-hmm. And I did not pick a place. I just said I wanted to meet with you. Okay. And I did not. I didn't either. <laughs> I had picked, I thought we had picked your bar. Oh, I know you I'm said like, that. And so I did think about that. Yeah, that's what I said. And I said it over and over, like as I was kind of scrolling. And then, you know, once I settled down, I was just like, I want to see Amy at her bar tonight. And then I just said it a few times. Okay. So, and, but you know what? The first time, yeah, I didn't think it would work, but no. I think we should keep trying. Yeah. What could it hurt? I did wake up in the middle of the night and had, I I realized I had been having dreams about the podcast and I was telling somebody about how the statistics work and how like we had this many downloads per month. And blah. so I was, I don't know who I was talking to. You're on the right track. But I was, at least it was podcast related. Yeah. So the other thing we wanted to bring up is you Megan mentioned that you yes, don't I, find as much joy in watching I other shows. To, yes, I don't. I will. I lately, like this whole past week when I've been sick, it's just been nature mm-hmm. documentaries left and right. I just don't, don't, I still love the murder podcast, but the murder shows, I just even Joe Kenda, like I stopped on Homicide Hunter and I'm like, what? I, I just don't want to. Yeah. Well, I do watch Forensic Files too for nappies, but mm-hmm. that, you know, that doesn't I, count. I took a Forensic Files nap this week. It was lovely. It was the original Forensic Files though, because those I know already. So I don't have to mm-hmm. worry that I, I don't have to force myself. Like I don't awake. feel like I have to stay awake to finish it because yeah. I already know the story. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I have I just... found that I tried to watch uh, last weekend or maybe it was the weekend before. When our friend Dave was in town, we mm-hmm. were watching an episode good of Good Old Dave. An episode of Evil Lives Here, mm-hmm. which is a great show. It's Love a that phenomenal show. show. And it was a particularly yucky one. And I like I started to feel like icky. Mm-hmm. Like I started to feel like, and maybe it's the empath thing where mm-hmm. I feel like it, it's it's rubbing off on me and like I was feeling the pain of these people who are talking about it and yeah I just was like I and so I watched the Hallmark thing instead yeah I just I don't I don't want to anymore yeah honestly I've been doing either plot shows or Nate like all this week it's been nature documentary after nature documentary because I just they're just you know they just make me happy and yeah Especially when you're sick, you just need something. You know, I still love murder podcasts and true crime on TikTok. And, Mm -hmm. but I just, the shows, I'm just not, yeah, really into it anymore. Yeah. I know that I mentioned Daisy Jones and the Six as a recommendation a week or two ago. When Melissa and I discussed that show for our Cozy Land podcast, Mm -hmm. I did a little research and found out that the, it was a book, which that I knew. It's the same author as The Seven Lives of Evelyn Hugo. That is such a great book. Mm-hmm. I remember that you liked it. I haven't read it. Oh, it's so good. I'll have to read that. So, yeah. I think you might like the Daisy Jones show. I probably it's, will. It's really I good. started the Cosby show again, like f- through, because I keep seeing clips of it on TikTok, and I'm really? like, this show is so good, despite it, him being It a was creep. good back then. Does it hold yes. up? For the most part, yes. Okay. I've only seen a few episodes, but you know it does. But it was like this. Lisa Bonet was so young when they started. Oh, like, I know. But it it was good. 
but I just, I'm trying to separate, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. present day Bill Cosby from Mm -hmm. TV show Bill Cosby Mm -hmm. because, but yeah, it was good. So I was up to like one o'clock last night watching (laughs) it. Doesn't help that I took a gummy at like one thirty and mm-hmm. took like a three hour hardcore nap. Mm. They worked really well. Cool. I lost a shark, you guys. Another and one? Another one. Oh. Yeah. Chum, one of my hammerheads, oh. his tracker fell off. And it said, you know, the typical message, we you've lost your shark. We're gonna mm. give you another one. But then when I click redeem, I get an error message. So I reached out to them last week and I haven't heard anything back from them. Mm. on my new animal so now i'm down to three. Oh, that's very too bad. i know i know i'm hoping i get a new shark and it's not a hammerhead because i do love hammerheads but i mm-hmm. want something different yeah yeah and then i saw a tiktok where there's a potential serial killer in wisconsin mm-hmm. men are going missing i forgot the location i sent it to amy but mm-hmm. I thought Men it was are, Chicago. Wasn't it Chicago? Was it Chica- oh, you know what? It might have been Chicago. But there is there is a rash of these in Wisconsin as well. As, well, the, as Wisconsin there is, is a here. smiley face killer, I think. Yeah, but I mean, it's still happening now. Yeah. Where let me because there are there are young men in their twenties ish. You're right, it's Chicago. Yeah. Going they're disappearing here in Minneapolis too and ending up mm-hmm. in the river. This mm-hmm. is what has been going on in this and this guy has been doing some research and he is me in a young male form because he made a spreadsheet he made a google map Mm -hmm. showing all of these victims where they were going where they were headed and the punchline which is not a punchline is that nobody seems to care which is odd because they're men yeah and they're white and the tiktoker said that that day because this person the tiktok was from March 17th, a body was pulled from the Lincoln Park, Chicago River in Lincoln Park. And he said that day, the 17th, he had been in a town hall meeting trying to get people to Mm -hmm. consider a serial killer. Mm -hmm. And they had basically kicked him out. So, yeah, Yeah. there's serial killers all over. They're active. We just Mm -hmm. don't hear about them. Yep. So, and honestly, I honestly prefer it that way. I don't. I know that they're out there, but knowing it and being confronted with a hard reality is yeah, two terrifying. different things. Yeah. Especially However, when you can't do anything about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But I do wish that the police and media would pay attention because I watched a few of his other videos mm-hmm. and he's talking about how he presented all of this stuff to, I think it was NBC News, mm-hmm. and he had an appointment to meet with them. And then he got mm-hmm. a message saying... Or it's canceled. We're not. They don't want to talk to you. I wonder why. So it's getting shut down somewhere, which means they probably know who's doing it, and it's high up. <laughs> I hope not. I don't know. And then somebody in the comments wrote, "You should tell Ashley Flowers about this." And then someone else says, Great. "No, she'll so she just can... take the story for herself." I was just going to say, so she can <laughs> plagiarize the story. Yeah. And then someone else said, "But I bet that the victim's family would rather have it solved than to worry about who's taking." Mm-hmm. credit for it which is absolutely true but that's also mm-hmm. the same kind of shit that people say to cover for people like Ashley Flower. so yeah yeah sucks. yep all right yeah I did not realize she was so garbagey but yeah, she I've read bad. some articles about her and she oh, I, yeah I have too yeah, and not some great. podcasts and she doesn't care she just doubles down keeps doing it she's so making a lot of money reminds, she reminds me a lot of somebody else that we We talk about that we can't say their name, Mm -hmm. but their shit's coming to the light. Yep. That's going to be fun. Popping the pipe. I know. Waiting for that to happen. Yep. A certain ghost hunter who we all know and hate. Hate's a strong word. I don't like him. I don't hate him. I just, I don't like how he treats the the dead. Yes. Yep. Whatever. Um, Anything else? I don't think so. I think we're 40 minutes in. in. 40 minutes well, later. So we're in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. A single mom named Nicole. And she bought this house five years ago, but the activity didn't start until she brought her son August home from the hospital. And he's three. And I changed up my format because honestly, I was lazy today. Yes, I did my notes today. Don't judge me, everybody. 
And I didn't want to go back and forth the way I usually did. So I just follow what happens in the show. Yeah, that's the way I do it. I know. I, I don't know why I was making things more difficult for myself. <laughs> well, yeah. I like I like to do it that way because a lot of times the way that it's edited is that it shows you something that Amy sees and then it and shows then you what it really is. It. Yeah. yeah. Or or yep. the other way around too. Yep. So when we get to Amy's arrival, the first thing she says Yeah, this is not good. She said there's going to be a lot of yelling, people dealing with bad stuff. There's a lot of freaking out, crying, screaming, and she said she feels a lot of panic. So I think this is from a combination of the the living and the dead spirits is what she's getting mm -hmm. these emotions from. Okay. So then we go to Steve and Nicole. Nicole's a single mom who owns the house. She said life is a daily hell. She's really worried for her son's safety. Again, she lives there with August, her son, who's three. Cute or in a button. Cutest I, thing. I ever. cannot with him. I know. And then her friend Patty and her daughter moved in a few months ago to try to get back on their feet about eight months ago. But they're actually moving out because of all the activity. Like I said, she bought the house five years ago, but there was no activity until August was born. Mm -hmm. She said she'll feel watched. She hears voices. Objects will move on their own. They see shadowy figures, you know, throughout the house. They're physically touched. And August sees a man with a mustache. Yeah. <clears throat> August says he can transform into anything. August says that this person punches August, goes into his head. Um, his eyes will get black. He punches Nicole and then he has no memory of it. So he's essentially getting jumped by this thing and, mm -hmm. and you know doesn't remember it because mm -hmm. one he's three and two you right. don't typically remember when you're right. jumps so then we go to amy and she said when she was opening herself to the location or to the walk she encountered a male who's with her now the man is very upset about the living he's very calculating with the living he likes games he likes torturing people mentally and emotionally she said people might feel like they have early onset alzheimer's they might forget things or you know think something's they're seeing something that's not there and amy said that this guy is really happy thinking about killing specifically thinking about killing families thanks so then we go back to nicole and steve and they're in the living room and nicole says she hears knocking from the basement and steve is like what well, could it be the pipes which that's a that's that is fair valid. Mm -hmm. yeah and she said, no, it happened when both the hair, heat and air were off. So there was nothing going through the pipes. It was not the pipes. Mm -hmm. um, she also will see shadowy figures go down the hallway pretty regularly. Steve asks what they look like. She says they're misty and they're not solid. And she said sometimes it's one and sometimes it's a cluster of shadowy figures. And he asks, can you describe it? You know, is it shaped like a human? And she said, it doesn't seem human shaped. It just is a kind of a form, not necessarily a shape of anything. Then they show a collectible fire truck that's that gets knocked off the shelf. They don't show the fire truck getting knocked off the shelf. Mm -hmm. They're just like, this is a fire truck. It gets knocked <laughs> off the shelf. <laughs> and then Steve is like, well, I know you have cats. Could they be, you know, pushing it off the shelf? Steve, it's not the, it's not the cats. It's, it's not, not the, the dogs. dogs. It's not the ferrets. It's nobody. It's not the pipes. <laughs> And Nicole said the cats don't even go in the room. They don't even like the room. Mm -hmm. So we go back to the base to Amy and we're in the basement. And she said the, the guy hangs out there. She said he might get physical with people downstairs because he considers the basement his place. He causes hallucinations. And it's more than that. He'll read their mind. And then he projects what they think of as a ghost. And he projects what they're afraid of. So it, yeah. it's very tormenting. Mm -hmm. He makes them think they're hearing sounds and seeing things. And Matt asks, What kind of threat do you think this guy might pose to the living? <laughs> a sexual predator. I think it's possibility, and I hope not, that he's perving out on them while they're sleeping in their bed. And Amy says he's a sexual predator. And she says, sound clip, I think it's possible. I hope not, but it's possible he's perving out on them while they're sleeping in their beds. Uh. Yeah. We don't like perving out. No. 
alive or in beds. Mm -hmm. I mean, awake or in beds. Mm -hmm. And she said the living would feel very uncomfortable in the bathroom. They'd feel watched and they might feel violated too. Gross. Yeah. We're back with Steve and Nicole in the master bedroom. And then we talk about the bathroom and she said it feels like you're being watched in the bathroom. And she said she felt like somebody was in the shower with her. Like she felt this cold air behind her. And she said it was just a very perverted feeling. Like Ugh. not very creepy. She said it's also, she also has been pushed on her hips a few times. She didn't specify like were they just like pushed in? Were she pushed forward? Were they, she didn't specify. She just said that she's been pushed on her hips. Okay. And she said it feels masculine. And then Augie comes in. And I just love him. Like He's so cute. He I only watched in, like the first 10 minutes of this yeah. episode. But I saw That's him. all he was in. That's yeah. all he was in. Yeah. And and he comes in and he goes, hi, mommy. Yes. <laughs> I know. No, he was so cute. And she picked him up. And Steve is going to be the world's best grandpa. Yeah. Like, I tell you what. He's yeah. going to be the world's best grandpa. Yeah. Steve. You know, he's talking to him and he asks him what's going on. And then Augie's telling him, he says that, you know, he sees a man, he has clothes on like me, but they're red. And he has a mustache and he has a lot of hair. And then Nicole tells Augie, you know, tells Steve what he does. And Augie says he hits him. And Steve said, oh, where does he hit you? And Augie points to his head. Poor little boo-boo. And then Steve's like, well, we're going we're gonna to try real hard to make that go away, okay? <laughs> So sweet. So sweet. And then, you know, he's out and, you know, that's all we get of him. But that's perfect for me. We could have mm -hmm. had a whole episode around him. Just I know. He's the best. So cute. So then he leaves and Nicole turns back to Steve and she's like, you know, I'm just full of self-doubt. Am I doing enough for my son? Am I protecting him? Because that's the main reason is, is that she wants them there. And Steve asks, right. you know, what do you want us to do? Nicole says something is attacking my son. And I want it to get fixed. And, you know, I don't blame her. Mm -hmm. So we go back upstairs with Amy. And then she kind of pauses and turns around and asks Matt if he touched her. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, I didn't touch you. And she said, all right, well, something's capable of touching people here. And she's worried he might be touching them inappropriately, caressing their hair, their face, their feet. Feet. Gross. The foot guy. Ugh. Ugh. I dated one. Obsession. We shouldn't kink shame, but no, we shouldn't. Well, that's true. As long as it's consenting, <laughs> yes, consent, yes, is key, right? And and you cannot consent if you don't know you're there. So exactly, not good. This spirit likes it when people get emotional. He breaks them down both mentally and emotionally. All he wants to do is mess with the living. Like that's his goal is just to fuck with them. Mm -hmm. So then we interview Patty. She's the we interview Patty. She's the roommate. She moved in eight months ago. Patty agrees that it's going after Augie. Every person that Steve agrees, meets with, agrees that it's going after Augie. Poor little kid. Patty has seen him scared, but doesn't know how to help him. How do you, which I, I mean, how do you help him? Mm -hmm. You know, how do you help someone from that? And, and as Steve asks, you know, why do you think him? And she said, I think it's, you know, because he's young and he can be manipulated. He doesn't mm -hmm. have the, what am I like the barriers that we as adults put up? Like mm -hmm. this isn't real. This mm -hmm. is fake. You know, mm -hmm. to a kid, they see it all. Yep. And then Steve asks Patty about her experiences, and she said she had something brush against her in bed when she was trying to go to sleep, mm -hmm. and then she also had movement on her bed, turned on the light, and nothing was there, and it wasn't the cats because they don't sleep in her room. Mm -hmm. To be, you know, I have that all the time where stuff's on my bed. I feel stuff walking around and. I feel it too, and I always just assume it's a dog, but sometimes I get up to look and it, there's nobody there. It's never a cat for me. <laughs> it's it's never a cat. I I think it's my old cat, you know, who passed mm -hmm. away, but mm -hmm. could be something else, but I don't mm -hmm. get a scary feeling. I'm just like, oh, mm -hmm. someone's here again. Mm -hmm. Then we're back to Amy and we're upstairs and she encountered a nasty woman. She doesn't want them there. And she said she looks really stretched out. There will be a sketch of her later. She said she's taking up the whole upstairs hallway and she's really relate she's related to the angry guy. She doesn't know how. We never figure out how she's related to this angry guy, but there's competition between them. 
and they hate each other. They just, Mm. they don't get along. So then we go into the bedroom. I believe it's the master bedroom where the woman wants to be heard and seen. She, Amy said the living would see and hear this person more than anybody else. And if she doesn't get the attention that she wants, she throws a little bit of a tantrum. She will pace, walk, slam doors, throwing stuff around. She knows that it scares them and she likes that. Mm. So not great. There's really no good spirits in this episode. Mm -mm. Then we go to Carl, who's Nicole's friend, Nicole's friend, and he's known her about 25 years. He doesn't live there. He's just, you know, had experiences and, and he's her friend. He was standing in the door to the kitchen and he saw a black mist float out from the laundry room into the kitchen. And Steve said, well, was anybody cooking? Which, you know, fair, but no, nobody's ever cooking. Ever. And ever. <laughs> Nobody ever cooks. <laughs> And Carl said, nope, nobody was cooking. He just saw it float by. He said upstairs, he's also seen a weird stretched out apparition with no face. He said from the neck down, it seems to be wearing some sort of a dress. So he got that it was female. And Steve asked how big it was. And he said it was probably six feet long, all stretched out. And nobody else saw it. Yeah, it was just him. He said... In the second floor hallway, which where Amy had seen this apparition of this woman, you always feel watched and you're never alone up there. Mm. And he said that he's the only person who will go into the basement. Nobody else goes down there. Mm. And again, I guess um, he's doing laundry. Yeah, I guess he's doing laundry. And again, you know, talking, he agrees that something's going after Augie. Augie will get aggressive and he's scared for Augie and Nicole. He said he's worked in child care and teaching, you know, mm. for 20, 20 some years. And he's a, he's never seen this and he's really afraid for him. And mm. I don't blame him. Mm-hmm. So then we go to Amy. We're in an upstairs bedroom. And she said there's a weird shapeshifter guy. She said he's showing Amy images of a demon and then of a man. So at first she thinks he's a demon, but he's not. He's mm. just a, a guy and a man. She said he looks like an 80s rock star. He's got, <laughs> and so she, from then she refers to him as metalhead demon or metalhead guy. And she said his sole focus is on the child. His goal is to turn the child into a dark and evil person. And he says, He's whispering, you want to kill everybody. Best if you kill your family. Holy shit. Yeah. So then Steve said that, you know, when the fir- whenever he gets into town, the first call he makes is to the law enforcement, and there was a murder-suicide right outside of Nicole's front door. Oh. So we meet with Sheriff Joseph Hanna, and there were two men who lived next door to each other in 1949. William Eck was 49, and August Meinberg was 60, and he was a German in- immigrant. And the feud started over their lawns. In 1949, William Eck left some tree trimmings on Meinberg's property, and this kind of was a verbal argument that escalated into a fight. Eck ended up choking Meinberg, didn't die. Um, It was broken up, and, you know, that just caused more and more tension. Mm -hmm. So finally, in 1950, there was a verbal altercation. Again, turned physical. Meinberg went inside. He's the German immigrant. He came back out with a shot-off shotgun. Nah, a sawed off <laughs> shotgun. Say that shot, three times fast. Yeah. He shot William Eck in the head and killed mm. him instantly. Jesus. Yeah. Meinberg was then waving the gun around and ranted, Who's next? Who's next? Yes. You know, like, yeah. A neighbor saw this, tried to wrestle the gun away. Then Meinberg turned the gun on himself, pointed it right at his chest, and shot and killed himself. Oh, my so God. So, totally a senseless. Yeah. I mean, they're all senseless. Over some lawn clippings. Some lawn clippings. Yeah. I mean, it's always more than that. You know, it's, I've seen a gazillion episodes of Fear Thy Neighbor. Yeah. And it's always some kind of property thing. They're fighting about yeah. property lines or they're yep. pro- fighting about the other one's dog. Yep. Or, or the, the noise really or their yard or, yeah. it's just so and really stupid. it's just guys puffing their chests out and yeah. being seen which one's the bigger dick. Who's, yeah. A hundred percent. Um, So then we go to Amy, and she said she doesn't know 
if metal a metalhead demon lived there or or had moved in and out or what but he's a, a very bad guy and then she said she gets the night the year 1942 with him she said something happened that caused him to lose faith and become a very dark individual. When he died, he focused on becoming as negative and evil as possible. She said it's possible he killed somebody when he was alive. Matt asks when he died, or not when, sorry. Matt asks how he died, and Amy says she's getting suicide from him. Oh, so it's the German guy. It's, yeah, German. So then... We go dig into the archives and we find a fatal car accident in 1997 where the person who passed away owned the house. So then we go to local author Karen Samuels and she's telling us about Ronnie and Karen Robeck who bought the house in 1975, moved in with their three children. And Ronnie was a, and I'm wondering if this is maybe 1995, not 75. I don't know. I'm going to say 70. No, I'm going to say 95. I'm going to say 95. Okay. Ronnie was a supermarket supervisor, and on May 20th, 1997, Ronnie was going to work. A tractor trailer swerved into oncoming traffic, hitting six cars. Ronnie's truck was crushed, and he died at the scene. We see his death certificate, and the cause of death was trauma caused by auto accidents. We see a lot of death certificates in this episode. Mm. There's like five. He was pronounced dead at the scene. There were four other people hurt in the in the car crash, but only Ronnie was the one was the only one who passed away. The driver of the tractor trailer was Benny Hilton. He had been driving 19 straight hours, which is twice as long as he should have been driving mm. without stopping. Mm -hmm. They also found cocaine in his system. So he was put in prison for five years and ordered to pay $145,000 to the family, which is $267,628 today. Mm -hmm. And after that, the family moved out in 2001. They couldn't stay in the home. I'm surprised they made it that long. Mm -hmm. Then we go to Amy and she says metalhead guy can cause um, messes with the living. She said he can create heart issues and she she's getting an image of a car accident. And he's calling it his big try. And Amy thinks that he caused or he tried to cause the car accident. Hmm. She said she sees a male in the car. And she said then she sees a separate accident with a female. And to her, what this means with those two accidents is he's already attempted one. And oh. he's going to try to attempt another car accident in the future with a woman. Wow. So then we kind of go back in records and find the original owners of the property and we interview one of their descendants. We interview Richard Groman. They, the Gromans owned the property for over 60 years. It was built in 1894 by his great uncle Thomas Groman. Thomas owned the property until 1908 when he sold it to his mother, Rebecca Groman. Rebecca Groman owns it until 1912, so four years, when she gets kidney failure and heart disease and she dies. Hmm. So then the property is transferred to Mabel, who's Rebecca's daughter. I don't know why they worded it that way and not Thomas's sister, but maybe because we're following the chain of ownership. Yeah, who own it, yeah. So it goes to Rebecca's daughter, Mabel. Mabel lived there for five years with her husband. She was diagnosed with uterine cancer and died in 1918 at 39 years wow. old. Yeah. That's young. So then we go back to Amy. And she sees a woman, again, He's she's related to the angry guy. Matt asks who she was in life. Amy says she lived there around 1915 or so, and she died in 1918. In her 40s or her 50s, and she said she's white, she has brown eyes, and again, she said she can't get how she's related to this angry guy, but they hate each other. And we'll get the angry guy mm -hmm. here. Is that so then, Mabel, you think? We think that's Mabel? Who? The the lady that, that I think was it in is. her yeah. 40s that she said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then we go back to Steve and he says, well, what happens after Mabel dies? Then we have, it gets goes to George, who's Mabel's nephew. And he was kind of the black sheep of the family. He eloped in 1907 to his wife, Hannah. Within a year, he was caught cheating by her. 
He was walking down the street with two girls on his arm and she ran into him. He fled to a hotel to try to hide, which like seriously. <laughs> it even made the newspapers. The headline was Chased Her Husband and Girl Companions <laughs> was the headline of the news article. Funny. He stays with Hannah, but they separate and he moves into the property. He was an alcoholic, and in 1930, he had passed out in his car on the railroad tracks, and a car was coming. Thank goodness cops were there, and they were able to pull him out of the car so he didn't get hit Jeez. by the train. He did get arrested. Yeah. Oh, consolation prize. Right. Five years after that, so 1935, he was drunk driving and wrapped his car around a pole. Survived that. So that's 1935. Jeez. 1952, he died of rectal cancer at 64 years old. Really? Yeah. I can't imagine that would be a fun cancer to have. No. Not that anyone is. But... No. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Not great. I, isn't that what Farrah Fawcett had? I, th Yeah, I think she had the rectal, she had it. rectal yeah. cancer. Yeah. Not bad. We're back to Amy, and she's talking about the angry guy. He lived there for a while, moved out, and then came back. He would hang out in the basement to escape his family. He felt like his family was a burden, and he took time. They took time away from him, what he wanted to be doing and thinking. Which, if this is George, which I believe it is, is probably drinking. They took time away from his drinking. Mm -hmm. And then she says, you can't be down here. This is my space. You need to leave. I think he just hated all people and just wanted to be alone. Which mm -hmm. like some days same. Yeah. Fair yeah. <laughs> right? My um, guess is he also wanted to be flitting around with the ladies. Yeah. Yep. She also said it was very hard for him to live with people. He fantasized about killing people and torturing people. <clears throat> And then she says she doesn't think the woman spirit is, is psychotic like him. And she said maybe that's why she hates him so much because he's like a monster and she's sure normal, which what is, <laughs> but right. by normal in this case, I just mean not a sociopath or a psychopath. Right. right. So then we go to the sketch and she said two th things stood out to her, the angry woman at the top of the stairs and the metalhead demon guy tormenting the person. So we get to the reveal, and it's Nicole and her friend Carl, and Steve does this whole background talk, you know, this is their story, and now I'm going to let Amy tell you about our walk. And Amy said the first thing she encountered was, or she's going to talk about, was the dead woman upstairs. She said, Amy, Amy said, the woman didn't want Amy there. She's not welcome. Welcome. This woman likes scaring the little living people up there, even though she knows it's causing psychological trauma mm. she doesn't care because she just wants attention it's kind of like toddlers any attention is mm -hmm. is good attention whether mm -hmm. it's you're getting in trouble or not mm -hmm. so she said one thing she does when she's bored or frustrated or not getting the attention she wants is she throws tantrums and amy mm. said you might hear stomping again like a toddler <laughs> yep like a toddler and nicole says she hears pounding on the floor like somebody is holding a broom handle and pounding the floor and amy said oh, yep she may try to be seen, and she can throw things. And that's when Nicole talks about the fire truck flying off the mantle of about three feet. And Steve asks what she would look like if people saw her, and Amy said her face is really stretched out, and Amy had a sketch done. And let me send you what I... Because I took pictures of it. Beep. I just sent them. Okay. And then once Amy said she says she had a sketch done, Carl said that he did see an apparition of a woman. And so then they show the sketch. He had a really hard time figuring out who she was. Like she didn't get any names from her. She just, you know, got what she looked like. She said she did get that she came from a very dysfunctional family and she lived there between 1915 and 1925. Mm. So then Steve talks about Mabel how she owned the house. She died of cancer. She died in 1918. And then Amy thinks that it, you know, definitely could be her. 
Okay, so I see the picture. She's yeah. ginormous. Yeah. I sent two more of them. Um, and one what's is going on with her mouth? I don't know. This, I will say, looks a little like it's in the style of that other one that looked like a Farrah Fawcett picture. Yeah. That I drew. That's creepy, though. It is. There's a okay. close up one coming, but it's just Got it. forever. Yeah, no, there it is. I can see it. And her fingers hanging over the thing look like rags draped mm -hmm. over there. Yeah, or like a rug or something. Yeah. Or scarves. Yeah, so it's basically the top floor of a, for those of you who are not watching the video, it is a top, like a top floor of a, second floor of a house. Mm -hmm. where That's the like overlooking. Overlooking the, the stairs foyer. going down. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And her head is basically from the ceiling to the almost to the, the floor. Banister. Yeah, to yeah. the top of the banister. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So then we talk about the deceased male related to the woman. He used to live there, but more recently than her. And he, she got that he was from the 50s or 60s, moved out and then moved back in. She said he was very unstable while alive, really despised his family, and fantasized about murdering his family. Hung out mostly in the basement because that's where he could be alone. And then Steve says, well, it's not a lot to go on, but sounds like... Went to him, remember, after Mabel died. She, mm -hmm. He was her nephew. Mm -hmm. He eloped with Hannah in 1907, cheated in 1908, and then separated and moved back in with his parents. Steve asks if he does anything, and Amy says yes. He can press, he like touch you, gets violent, he will hit. Amy or Nicole says that she's been pushed on the hip, and Amy says he actually, the spirit touched her back and played with her hair, but in mm -hmm. like a really gross. Yeah. And Amy saw him watching people in the shower. And that's when Nicole says, well, I feel like I've been watched in the shower. Mm -hmm. And he can go, he can create and cause hallucinations. And that's when I said, you know, he'll go into your mind and project back what you're afraid of. And just the night before the reveal, Nicole said she saw somebody running through her dining room. And Amy says, this is, it's bad. It's really Yikes. Bad. Then we have the other male that she encountered. When she said when she first encountered him, she, he kind of projected himself as a demon. So she thought maybe he was a demon, but he's not. He's just a dead guy who wants, you know, who's just a douche. Mm -hmm. evil Is guy. this that, the 80s rocker? Yep. Okay. He looks like an 80, 80s heavy metal rocker, and he's obsessed with harming the living, and he's focused on his big try. That's when Amy car talks accident. about how he showed her the car accidents. And leading Amy to believe that this happened in the past, and he's working on making it happen again. Mm. That's when Steve talks about the Robach family, the car crash of Ronnie, and Amy says that Metalhead could have had something to do with this crash, mm -hmm. which makes me think, I wonder how many things happen that mm -hmm. we think are not mm -hmm. anything, but they are something. Yeah. Yeah. So then we show a sketch of Metalhead, and he <laughs> is next to the bed of Augie, and I'm sending that now. Okay. So he oh, I see. said that Augie has been taken over a few times. One time she talks about he ran in really scared, and then she said all of a sudden he just didn't have fear. He stood up, walked over, and slapped her in the face. Oh my she God. Said he became very disoriented after that and was calling her name. And Nicole said, sound clip, I know it wasn't him. And Amy says, Yeah, it wasn't him. Yeah. Because then after that, he got very, you know, didn't know what was going on. Yeah. And Amy Terrifying. is really scared for Augie because the metal guy wants death by any means necessary. Wow. Amy says, so, on par with demons. Oh. Which is, I guess, why she thought it was a demon in yeah. the beginning. Maybe he's um, working with them. He has his face is blacked out in yeah. the sketch. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's so on top of his head? It looks like a funnel. The, it's a bed down. post. It's the Oh, that's part of the, of the bed. bed. Yeah. Well, I was looking at the other side to see if there was another one over there and there wasn't. So I thought I thought it was something on top of his head. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what I think it is. Maybe yeah. I'm <laughs> either yeah. way. Okay. Yeah. Creepy. Oh, you got my yeah. pictures. 
so now we have Steve asking, you know, can they stay? Should they stay or should they go? Amy said they can stay. She said, even if you were to move, these things would go with you. So you have to fix it. Mm -hmm. She said there are lots that need to happen simultaneously. It'll be one shit storm of a day. Mm -hmm. I kind of paraphrase what she said. <laughs> she said, first of all, your son needs an exorcism. It oh. does not have to be done by a Catholic priest, but it does need to be done. He has been utilized by the metalhead guy for a long time. And they need to make sure that he is totally out of her son. At the same time that this exorcism is going on, a psychic and a medium need to show up and remove the three people from the home. So the woman, the metalhead guy, and the basement guy. When that's happening at the same time, a Reiki master will come in and remove any cords from Nicole that the dead people have attached. Wow. And that's where it says, that's where Amy's like, Steve said, well, what if they just cut and run? And Amy said, they would just go with you. Yeah. They're, they're attached to you at this point. So the script at the end, Nicole is searching for an exorcist, psychic medium, and a Reiki master. And the activity continues. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I need and to know. that was four years ago. Yeah. Five years ago at this point. So, I mean, maybe it's better, but. I hope so. I do too. I mean, the kid would be what seven, seven or eight seven or so. Eight. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Yeah. Good job. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it was a good one. All right. Go. Cool. Oh. All right. You're going goofy again. Oh, come on. What is yeah. that? Okay, this is really bizarre because not only, not only did you turn white and then yellow, but there was on the top of my screen, I mean, on the top of your, what I'm looking mm -hmm. at you up here was a bunch of pictures of me. It was a whole bunch of this picture mm -hmm. do, 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 above your screen. Well, that's weird. Yeah. That's uh, super weird. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. Yeah. Amy, what do we get next week? Next week, I will be presenting Evil Comes Home. This is season 11, episode six. It originally aired August 14th, 2019. And I chose it because I was looking at the spreadsheet and mm -hmm. I could see where there were gaps where we hadn't done something in you know in a, several episodes mm -hmm. and so i just like started at the beginning and and looked i had discovery up on my other screen and was just watching the intros yeah to each episode yep and this one looked the best to me so nice that's why it was my favorite three, of three or four yep yeah right. it is time for analysis it's time for an analysis all right all right it's time for an analysis Time for an Alanism. And you have one picked out. I do. And I, um, yeah, I, I was reading through them today. And this one stuck out to me because of what we were talking about, about the mm -hmm. astral traveling and stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is the quote from my dad. I'm a world traveler and didn't know it. So true. Yep. Yeah. I don't know what, where he got that or what he was talking about. I could ask Jackie. He was wise beyond his ears. Maybe he was astral traveling and he just yeah. didn't know what, what to call it. Yeah. I mean, he is a world traveler. They always yeah. traveled. They right. were, went, they'd been to Australia and all over Europe. And mm -hmm. so he is a world traveler, but nice. I don't know why he didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. No. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks thank you. This was See kind of a subdued time. episode, but that's okay. Yeah. yeah. See you next time, everyone. Yep. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Activity Continues podcast. We really appreciate you giving us your ears for a bit. Please reach out if you have a suggestion for which episode of The Dead Files we should cover next, or if you have a spooky story you'd like us to share on the show. 
We can be reached at theactivitycontinues at gmail.com or through our website or any of our socials. Links are all in the description of the show. Please feel free to drop us a note and say hi. And join us next time when the activity continues. The Activity Continues is produced by me, Amy, at Collected Sounds Media and is part of the Independent Collected Sounds Podcast Network. We are also proud members of the BooPod Network of Super Cool Podcasts. Nailed it. <laughs>